welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well on our talking point show as we look back at a uh, yeah an ad adequate victory over in Molyneux, uh, a rare one. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, Wolves nil, Manchester City three on the 17th of September 2022. And this is our little talking point show where I've had a chance to rewatch the match back on City Plus where I'm less stressed. Uh, <laughs> rearrange my uh, player ratings as well. Please check out my player rating show, guys. But I have made slight adjustments to the scores. Now, I've watched it back, uh, stress-free, if you like. <laughs> so, please, and that's what we do in this. We have a look at the stats, the facts, and uh, changes to those player ratings after a, a more relaxed watch back. It's always easier watching when we won. I don't like draws and defeats, but uh, it doesn't happen that often these days, watching City, does it, right? The teams, yes, the teams on the day. Three changes for City. Well, the team. Sorry, I'm not going to bother with the Wolves team. You know what the Wolves team. Want to watch the Wolves team? Wolves. This is a City. This is a City channel. Three changes to the City team from the Dortmund game. Edison, Stones, Diaz, Akanji, Cancelo, Rodrigo, De Bruyne, captain. Bernardo, Foden, Haaland, and Grealish. Yeah, a bit of a shame. No Alvarez. I took a chance. I thought Pep might plump him in. Um, but he didn't. Obviously, he stuck where he st I thought if he wasn't playing, obviously, he'd, he'd risk either Mahrez or Grealish, but it's nice he stuck with Grealish. And a kanji for Aki. Uh, Aki, of course, unfortunate, didn't do anything wrong in the last game, been playing very, very well for City, so a little bit unlucky to lose out. So I, I got nine right in my team, so I was quite happy with that. Was it nine or eight? Anyway, I can't remember. Anyway, we were pretty close, we were pretty close. I wasn't, I didn't realise, of course, um, Certain players would uh, would come back into the team, but uh, yeah, the subs: Ortega, Carson, Walker, Aki, Gundogan, Alvarez, Gomez, Maras, and Palmer. So yeah, uh, not bad, not bad bench. Had a couple of guys there could make a difference if we needed to. Of course, referee was Anthony Taylor, VAR Darren England. Interesting that seven of the Wolves eleven were Portuguese and three of City's eleven were Portuguese. So ten Portuguese players out of twenty two. So. Yes, a lot of some some flair. Let's uh, there was a bit of flair on show, wasn't there? Let's let's be honest about it. From wolves, wolves in particular, some nice little touches, uh, obviously to compete with us. Right, the match report. One minute, a great back heel down the right by Ford and sets up that uh, assist by KDB for uh, Harland. No, no, he didn't get to it, did he, Harland? No, he couldn't quite get to him, but behind him to stick his toe on it was uh, Old Grealish. Saw so a great start, fifty-five seconds. And I think even I think Bernard was waiting behind Grealish as well. So we have certainly have men in the box, so that's great. And it's one nil. Couldn't ask for a better start, could be in all fairness. At six minutes, the ball is in six minutes, the ball's in Wolves net again. But Rodri was a judge to a foul keeper side. I think he probably did. It's always it's always gonna go the keeper's way. We've had a couple of Edison like that, I, I think, this season so far. At 13 minutes. Rodri, an interesting one. He was sort of fouled on the he fouled the Wolves player. It came to nothing the free kick, but it was being booked. I think he was more frustrated with his own mistake. I think I, I thought um, the has had made a mistake, but watching it back, I think uh, Rodri had sort of more frustrated. He'd made a mistake himself and give away a, a foul. So a bit silly because then you've got the uh, rest of the game. He's on a you know his position. You can't really afford to take too many chances. Sixteen minutes. Yeah, it's two nil. Uh, probably against the run of play. I thought Wolves were playing very, very well. Haaland run, just runs at the defence after getting the ball. And it was Kilman, wasn't it? He was twisted and turned, didn't quite know what to do. And Haaland just let fly with his left foot just inside inside the uh, far post from outside the box. And uh, the keeper not real too much time. He's a big lad, but he had no time to readjust. It's 2 0. And this is, I think, it originally stemmed from a. Uh, a long ball from Edison, some good work by uh, Grealish and Cancelo out on the on the left wing, and it finished with Bernardo, who then put it through and to Haaland for his run. 23 minutes, City a bit sloppy defensively, especially Cancelo is a bit slow to get across as uh, Guedes uh, makes a great run, but uh, Neto puts it just wide from the angle, so it could have easily been 1-1. It looked a bit, a bit slack at the back there. 33 minutes, yes, and what what should have really killed the game, it didn't, uh, that's for sure. The disaster for Wolves as Nathan Collins receives a red card for an awful looking challenge on Grealish. I mean, people have been trying to compare it to Erling Haaland, Challenge the other week. Uh, yeah, I would say to those stupid idiots that uh, yes, Erling Haaland didn't have eyes in the back of his head to see what was going on behind him. 
And of course, uh, Mr. Collins must have had eyes in the back of his head not to see what was going on in front of him. So that, that's the comparison I'll make with that. But hey, it's just stupid comments by opposing fans who've got usual stick on, on the social media. Yeah, and I think I don't think there's much option. He was off, simple as that. And I don't think he mean any any real intent with it. It was just a bit a bit of lack of awareness, I think, from uh, you know, with with his eyes in the back of his head rather than the front of his head where they should have been. Uh, strangely enough, though, I thought City failed really to take advantage. It lifted Wolves. Nunes moved back it into the defence and played very very well, didn't he? I thought in defence. Uh, and this would carry on into the second half as Wolves actually looked the better team until we actually made it 3-0 late in the game. But, yeah, it didn't didn't give us that impetus. So it was still 2-0 at half-time. As I say, Wolves had been just as good with 10 men as they'd been 11. And it continued into the second half, a sluggish start by City. Uh, you would have thought City had the 10 men on the pitch, not Wolves. And Wolves continued to look better. Lage had done some sort of work uh, on formation, slight work, not much. He more or less stuck with what he got in the first half. He didn't make any changes. Uh, and despite this, uh, there's no that there wasn't that too many clear cut chances for Wolves initially, although they did have a lot of the ball. And on 54 minutes, he should have really made it three 0 But KDB sort of failed to, you know, he didn't have a great game apart from two assists, which sounds silly, doesn't it? He fail he fails to feed. Harlan do us through uh, after some good work from Grealish, but it should have really been through a uh, good chance for Alan to score, but KDB just missed it. 60 minutes, we almost paid the price, didn't we? As Al, Al, Al Nori played very well and does great to get down the left, but again, Guides, who'd been involved, miss hits and slices across. A bit of a let off for us there on 60 minutes. 65 minutes, Nunes was booked for a cynical foul on KDB. Finally, finally on 69 minutes, we made the extra man pay and some great play, some great interplay, wasn't it, on that side between Fold and KDB, Haaland and KDB again. And his cross is, is beautifully glanced uh, past the despairing uh, keeper, Saar. And the defender, and it's three nil, and it is back. It is finally, finally game over because Wolves had had the stuffing knocked out, of them, and then there's no chance of them coming back. Seventy-two minutes subs for City, which Pep had been threatening to do for a few minutes before this. Finally, added a bit of more, a bit, bit more control to City as Wolves finally did to sort of look deflated and beaten. Gundo, Alvarez, and Maras came on. Bernardo, KDB, and Foden went off. Seventy-five minutes, Maras. Almost, almost gets on the score sheet, score sheet but uh, Sam makes an, a good save. 77 minutes, Palmer comes on for Greeley. She could have scored as well, but didn't. 81 minutes, Gomez for Rodri. And Stones moved into that sort of uh, position. Interesting enough, when we did start the game, we're playing three at the back. I noticed Stones was playing more of a, a wing back unless we came under under threat. And then he dropped into a back four. But uh, yeah, I think Stones enjoyed himself, but obviously it was a bit of an odd position for him to play, I think, yesterday. So he wasn't involved as I would have hoped. So as I said, I watched it back on City Plus. That was the game. Uh, good good 3 0 victory, although you know you can argue Wolves played very, very well. Uh, on the rewatch, any changes to my player ratings? Well, if you go back and have a look at my player ratings show, uh, Edison, uh, Tyrone Marshall, the MEN give him seven, I give him seven. I'm going to stick with that. Stones, Tyrone give him seven, I give him six. I'm going to up that. I'm going to up it to 6.5. It's a bit unfair with my player rating just, uh, assessment of, John, uh, of Stones. I thought he was playing a, a weirder position uh, for Pep. Uh, and uh, he did better than I thought. So I'm going to make it 6.5. Diaz, uh, eight from Tyrone, seven from me. Again, I thought it was much better on watch back, so I'm going to give him a 7.5. I'm going to increase Diaz as well. Akanji, I'm going to stick with what I got. Seven from Tyrone, I give him an eight. I'll stick with that eight. I thought it had a very good game. Cancelo, Tyrone, give him a seven. I will give him a 6.5. But another one, another guy who's going to go up for me, I'm going to give him a seven. It's a funny performer, some great defensive play, which is what we, what he is. He's a defender. Not so great going forward, but he's a defender after all. So I'm going to give him a seven. One, once or twice he got beat, but I thought it was a pretty good defensive performance for once from Cancelo. Rodrigo, Tyrone, I give him a seven. I give him a six and a half. Again, I'm going up, guys. Uh, some, sometimes I go down, sometimes I go up. I'm going up with these. There is a guy who's going to go down in a minute. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give him a seven, Rodri. Uh, played better, stayed relatively cool after that poor booking he received, uh, which is his own fault, basically. But uh, I, I think there's one in the second half where he was a bit 
bit over over the guy. I felt I thought the referee uh, actually Taylor did did okay yesterday. I thought it was all right. Uh, and uh, say so, I'm, I was a bit cruel to him yesterday with six and a half. So I'm going to give him a seven. And the guy who's dropped, yeah, the guy I'm going to drop a half a point is uh, KDB. Uh, so I only give him an eight. I give him a seven and a half. He obviously, a couple of assists on one good assist. Well, you know. One exceptional assist, assist as well. I'm going to knock him down to seven because apart from those two assists, he was pretty awful. Uh, he was pretty he worked, put the work in, don't get me wrong, but he was awful. So I'll drop him down to seven. Bernardo, Tyrone, Tyrone give him a seven, I give him a six and a half, I'll stick with that. Foden, Tyrone give him a seven, I give him a seven and a half again, I'll stick with that. And Harlan, Tyrone give him an eight, I give him an eight point five, but I'm gonna knock it down. I'm gonna knock old Harlan down, the Danish meat shield. I'm gonna knock him down to seven and a half. Uh some uh nice touch a couple of nice touches, uh obviously a great goal, but uh I think I give him too much credit. I thought apart from that, he looked like I did say in the player eighty show, like a big lummox. But hey, I'll take me a big lummox scoring a goal and playing some nice little touches. But yeah, I'm only gonna I'm gonna knock him down to seven and a half. I think I was too kind at eight and a half, but uh there you go. Shoot me if you want, guys, but that's my feelings. Uh, Grealish as well. He's another guy who's going to drop slightly. Uh, Tyrone, give him an eight from the Manchester Evening News. I give him an eight initially, but I'm going to knock that down to seven and a half. I think the same as Haaland. Uh, he had a good game. Don't get me wrong. You know me. I'm a big Grealish fan. I'll always stick up for him, but I think seven and a half is reasonable. Great goal, but uh, some nice, one or two nice little touches, but yeah, I think it was a bit, I uh, got a bit carried away with eight, so I'm just going to give him a seven and a half. So there you go, a bit of a change. Uh, four or five are up, four or five up, two or three down. So that's probably normal for me when I get to watch it back in a more composed uh, composed frame of mind. And my man of the match, which are giving the player ratings, was a Kanji, and I'm not going to alter that, but Kanji stays my man of the match. The stats for the game uh, Wolves, six shots, one on target. Says he's 16 7 on target. Okay, considering playing 10 men, not not brilliant, but uh, as we said, two and a half days after the last game, perhaps understandable. Possession, 60% for City, should have really been more, but I will take that. Pass accuracy, passes, 415 with an 84% accuracy for Villa. Uh, for Villa. It's because he was singing Champions of Europe, you'll never sing that. I keep thinking, I thought we were watching Villa for a minute with a, that fan singing that, but hey, there you go. 619 passes for City, 90%. Uh, accuracy, which is okay, fine. Corners five for Wolves, seven for us. Yeah, so please forgive me if I, if I mention Villa. Obviously, I just I thought we were at Villa Park with the fans at one one, one time. Uh, the XG at XG philosophy, yeah, Wolves 0.32 and City 1.3. Uh, so there you go, that means anything to you. <laughs> there you go. And the record at their place, I'm just saying before, that's a you know, it, it's not. It's, you know, it is one of our worser grounds, if you like. We played fifty nine times at their place, only won fifteen, which isn't a lot, obviously. I mean, you're talking twenty five percent, aren't you? Drawn thirteen and lost thirty one, so it is one of the worst places to go. Uh, and interestingly enough, and uh, uh, backing that up, of course, one of the stats is first. That's the first time City have won three on the trot at Molyneux since nineteen oh six, and no, it wasn't around then, guys. So. Less of that, so that just sort of backs that sort of stat up of it not being one of our uh, best grounds to play at. And overall, now City have won 16 and drawn six of our last 22 away games. Our next away game is Anfield. We'll carry that on, hopefully. KDB equaled Gerrard's assist record in the assists of 92, and he's equaled it in 287 fewer games, so that's not too bad. And that was Mr. Harlan's, Mr. Mr. Ragnar Lothbrook. His first goal outside the box since the 21st of March 2021, which was 67 goals ago. <laughs> there you go. So not too bad. And decision, decisions. Obviously, we've got no immediate game coming up so until uh, the derby after the international break. So obviously, when I do the preview show for the City United game, uh, I'll have a, another look at the decision, decisions when we see how the squad is shaping up and hopefully... All the guys have come back from the international break, and I believe Mr. Calvin Phillips has now has to have an operation on his shoulder, doesn't he? So he won't be back. He, he I doubt he'll be back for that. He certainly won't, be, you know, doubtful for the World Cup now, which is a bit disappointing for him. He's not really got going this season, has he? 
But if you look at that team yesterday, look at that performance, just to make a quick statement on perhaps who's undroppable if remaining fit from, from that start in 11 after the international break. I think Edison's undroppable. I think Candy's undroppable. I thought Diaz, I didn't have Diaz down originally, but I thought it played very well. He's undroppable. Rodri, I would say. Foden. And uh, yeah, well, Haaland's undroppable, isn't he? Big Lummox is that he's undroppable all the time. So from that, that start in 11, there's six names that I think. Uh, almost guaranteed themselves a spot against United. Some of the others probably have, but they're, they're the guys that have just put that a little bit higher on the match. A little sum up. Yeah, a tired-looking City. Certainly in that second half, certainly when once Wolves went, went down to 10 men, they were you know, they were, they were the better team uh, for me for, until we actually made it 3-0. Um, but it was a tough Champions League game, so perhaps as you're 2-0 up against 10, Matt, perhaps 10 men, perhaps psychologically it's hard to get Kick back in, isn't it? Hard to get tuned in again. Uh, but thankfully, thankful that Wolves shot themselves in the foot with the sending off. As I say, it did improve them, but with 11 men, they could have, could have been a lot better. But uh, all credit to them. Uh, yeah, um, with the full squad going forward, Wolves, uh, if they get the, the forwards back, get Costa on the pitch, although I'm not a big fan particularly. Uh, I think I can see them moving up the league. I thought they played very, very well yesterday. All credit to them. Um, they, they played extremely well with 11 men and they played even better probably with 10 men at times but uh, yeah so I do expect them to move up the league based on what I saw yesterday I think they've got a, a good squad I've, I've never been overly impressed with Wolves' consistency but certainly certainly at Molyneux yesterday they played very well but as far as City overall a satisfying result of course to take us into the international break and I was happy for both Grealish and particularly Akanji on his league debut, don't forget Akanji, but I was happy more for Grealish for getting that goal, all the stick he's getting, I'll stick up for him left, right and centre, you know I me, mean? a lot a lot of unfair stick on, on social media and I think it's a disgrace uh, in all fairness which I commented on in the player ratings show. So please check that out if you get a chance to play a rating show and a bit more in-depth analysis with uh, Tyrone Marshall for the Manchester Evening News. And join me Monday night. Yes, uh, sad day, obviously, with the Queen's funeral. Uh, Monday evening, though, obviously, things are back open. I'll be back open. We'll have my first uh, live show for three weeks. Now I'm back in Blighty. I've got three layers of clothes on here, which I didn't have on last uh, three or four days ago over in Greece. I'm, I've put my house coat back on. Hey, <laughs> so we're struggling. I'm back in work on Wednesday morning. Oh, I'm so depressed. Hey, but hey, join me. We'll have a bit of a laugh anyway. Monday, Monday evening, let's cheer ourselves up after you we'll know, play our respects to the Queen on it and Obviously, we'll have, we'll have a chat about that as well. We will, but we'll chat about City and obviously the break. And, of course, um, the Champions League games that took place while I was away. So, join me Monday night, Citizen Channel Live, 7pm. be great to see you on there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please, until we meet again, I ask one thing, don't I? Please, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.